My name is Gal. I am a research scientist in Israel Atomic Energy Commission and also um, a scientist at the Technion, at the CS department. Yeah, go, go, go inside, it's okay. Um, moreover, and, and by that I can give some kind of a context to the, to the rest of the meeting, I'm also holding the um, One API Center of Excellence for Intel uh, in Israel, meaning that many work that we do for heterogeneous systems, uh, so we do that with, with this One API. Um, it's okay, go, go ahead. Uh, with this One API um, uh, franchise. And although this talk is not, is completely academic and not vendor specific, I will try to talk a little bit about the different vendors that work in this field and how we uh, incorporate our work with them, as this is really important when we handle um, heterogeneous hardware. So what this talk is, is, is about at all. So we're gonna talk about acceleration of C++ with OpenMP. Now, many of you already know that uh, in order to accelerate, um, this is a little bit uh, too much, so I will stand here. Uh, the lighting, uh, okay, I will stand here. So uh, as you obviously know, uh, C++ is considered to be a high performance, um, high performance code, along with C and Fortran. And as time goes by, we see that um, those uh, languages um, are increased in, in complexity. We see now that we have even modern Fortran in the latest 2018 standard that is almost identical in a way to, to C++. We see many features from C that are being used under C++ when we want to have um, a real high performance code. So those three live together in a way. And we, we also know that C++ have its own acceleration uh, um, abilities. And in this talk, I would like to talk about the open standard of OpenMP, which is a very common one, to accelerate such, such code. So in a way, although we are talking here in a core CPP conference about C++, Please notice that the entire talk is also applied to uh, C and Fortran. So what actually we, we are, are gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about why to do things in parallel to begin with. I will not jump directly into the deep, uh, deep water. Uh, what happened that took us from single core to multi-core because many of us still run many simple codes in a serial fashion. Why we moved from there to the uh, many core? Many of you all obviously heard about the one trillion dollar uh, uh, stocks of Nvidia from the last I don't know 48 hours. What what happened that took us so so fast to the many core uh, uh, era? And what we, what can we do with that to accelerate computations? Then I would like to talk about the evolution of OpenMP as a standard from the days of the single, of, of, of the multi-core towards these days, almost 30 years of, of uh, using the standard. And eventually, obviously, we're gonna talk about the usage of OpenMP for GPUs. And I will try to also to give a demo. This is, uh, as far as I can, just, uh, I, I, can, uh, I, can, I can see, there is a lot of engineers here also, and I consider myself also as an engineer. So we will try to give the perspective uh, of, of a little bit of how to code and how it's actually working. Uh, so we can go after this talk and try to do the simple, uh, simple usage of OpenMP for uh, GPUs. So let's start with why parallel. So this is actually a computer, a parallel computer from 4,600 years ago that was found near us here in today's Iraq. And it was used, with, there is like many of those thousands of those pieces that are located today in Berlin's uh, uh, Pergamon uh, uh, Museum. And what you can see here is the ability to compute 
in parallel, it was given to each farmer uh, in uh, old times Iraq to compute its own um, um, uh, era of the fields. Uh, and this era of the fields, the agricultural fields, needed to go back to the, to the king or whatever to compute the taxes. So this is actually the first parallel computing hardware and actually software embedded in it that, uh, that uh, was found. And this is the way where we start. I'm starting with that to say that parallel computing and computing is actually identical. And, and it goes hand in hand. Now, if we want to put that on a scale from back the, those 2,500 uh, before counting towards today, we saw that there was a constant evolution. Uh, do you want me to, to use this? This is not working? No. That's for me. Ah, OK. OK. So what we can see is that from those ancient times towards today's one exascale, it's actually exascale era today. We are beyond the petascale. We entered the exascale area. Exascale is 10 to the 18 uh, floating point operations per second in parallel computers. And through all those times, we got constantly those uh, uh, need to increase the amount of computation that we do. And we know that the way to do so is to do so by doing it parallel. We can obviously increase the compute power of a single machine. But if you really want to do uh, massive work, you need to do this in parallel. And that, that actually hasn't changed in the last 5,000 years. So why, why parallel? Let's take several examples. This is a nice uh, a video by, by NVIDIA. Why we actually do things in parallel in supercomputing today? We do it so for scientific research that cannot be handled without uh, uh, this amount of power. Climate prediction is constantly using and promoting PDEs that, that must rely on, on parallel hardware. Fluid dynamics, drug discovery, the discovery of uh, uh, of the connection in molecules that, that gave us uh, in, in, in no time during the COVID epidemic, uh, uh, new drugs uh, was discovered using supercomputers. Um, high energy physics, the recent uh, 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 fusion uh, uh, breakthrough in, 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 uh, in the US was given uh, using this kind of simulations. Uh, everything that we are talking about in oil and gas exploration is constantly done with this high amount of, of computing. And obviously, as you all know it, I do not need to, to, to move on on that uh, um, uh, besides saying ChatGPT. But ChatGPT uh, is actually taking all of this mass computing and make it a model. It's, it's like we, we enter the, the, the point in, in time in which AI, in a way, is now necessarily needs supercomputing in order to, to move on. So let's talk a little bit about multi-core before we will move on to how to, to use it. Uh, although we are not going to talk about multi-core, we're going to talk about many-core. So I don't know if you know about this graph. This is a very important graph that describes the end of the Nard scaling. The Nard scaling is uh, an observation. Uh, that in a way is much more important than the Moore's law that everybody is familiar with. And the Nard scaling basically says that uh, we can take, we can increase the amount of transistors per uh, um, given area and still have the same uh, efficiency regarding power. Now, that was the case up to 2004 or 5, something like that, in which uh, 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 we found out in the, in the uh, Pentium 4 that it's not working in this way anymore. This physics is, is broken. And from now on, the power is actually close to performance uh, uh, um, time um, in the power of two, meaning that the growth in power is unsustainable. We cannot put any more transistors in a single CPU and expect to get the efficiency that we want uh, regarding performances and regarding power. That means that we needed to move immediately to do things in parallel, to do those things we're using simple cores and do those in multiply those, those cores and work uh, uh, collaboratively 
uh, with those scores in order to get some, some result. And what we can see in this amazing graph by Carl Rupp is that it, it took 42 years of microprocessor trend data, this is actual data that is uh, uh, pointed here, and we can see that Moore's law is keeping up with the amount of transistors, and we see that up to 2005, the, till this end of the NART scaling, everything was move, moving uh, 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 smoothly. We got performances, but just increasing the amount of transistors. And we could also increase the frequency, obviously. But from there on, we got, uh, uh, we understood that we hit the wall, and we needed to use as much as uh, logical cores uh, to constantly increase the the performances, but still, and, and before I will say this still thing, is that at that time, the common usage to do computation using this, this multi-core thing was given by two simple uh, uh, APIs. The first one is the message passing one. You have, uh, uh, you have cores in different computers. They send messages, and by that, they synchronize. And the other one is OpenMP which use the, uh, um, the um, internal shared memory aspects that, that the single computer have. And by that, it could synchronize that better without messages, but just understanding that there is a shared memory and we can all access it uh, uh, with uh, low latency. So those two technologies was very common and together they gave us the ability to take any kind of scientific computation, distributed it with MPI, and then parallel it with OpenMP. Now the problem is that since uh, the end of the NART scaling, and although this increase that you just saw, <coughs> the expectation towards 2030, but even before that, is that all of those trends will go flat. And Moore's law, is gonna end, and and the amount of computing that we'll get, even from the increase of of those CPUs, is not gonna be enough. And and there is a limit to how much power you can do on a single machine. Right now, we have the latest and uh, the best uh, type of of CPUs. Uh, for example, the uh, the Sapphire Rapids. You have 56. CPUs on a single socket. So we moved over the last decade from around 16 or 32 to 56. This is not, not that much to do with power computing. And that's the reason why in 2009, uh, this is a nice video that has many views. NVIDIA introduced, in a way, the they're not the only one that introduced it, but they made the revolution. The thinking of many core, meaning that we're gonna take the previous core that we have, we can actually even make it smaller, and by make it smaller, it's gonna be less, less uh, 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 powerful, but it's gonna be much more efficient. And if we can take our code and make it much more parallel, then we can take all of those cores, put them in a single machine, and by that to get a computation move uh, faster. So that's like was the uh, uh, initiative to move supercomputing towards the future, of, uh, although we hit the, the NART scaling wall. So what they showed here back then, back in 2009, it was needed to explain what a GPU is. So the, uh, how CPU works, uh, uh, although it's powerful in single, uh, single steps, and right now you're gonna see the Mona Lisa uh, instantly drawed on the on the wall uh, using this small tube that, in a way, simulates small um, small CPUs, uh, which combined uh, represent what it is today's uh, accelerator or GPU. So this is kind of neat, right? If we want to see the internals of a GPU, we see something that is pretty similar to what we saw before in, the, in this painter. We see that we got tons of those uh, uh, small scale CPUs. They're not really CPUs because they 
are not really central. They are not smarter than CPU. They cannot do all the things that CPU can do. It's actually pretty dumb. They can do mostly things that are single instruction and gets multiple data. So the thinking is that we're going to get one instruction, put it in the machine, and pushing data through the, uh, through the accelerator, and by that you uh, uh, increase the computation. If you want to think about the change to the classical Flynn uh, taxonomy that described how we work with computers even before we actually had those computers, this is from the 60s, I think. So the, uh, those two and two matrix was the original one. The, uh, the options that we have to, to, to work in, in parallel on those computers. So we have the single instruction, single data, single instruction, multiple data, multi-instruction, single data, so forth. And now we got the single instruction, multiple threads. So we want to move a single instruction. Think about that like uh, uh, some uh, equations of, um, of a neural network. It's constant equations, but we move a lot of data towards that, and we do this with many, many threads that will uh, collaboratively share this workload. If we really want to see the change in numbers, we need to go to the top 500 list. This is a, a very nice, uh, um, I don't know how to call it, it's like um, infographics, that describe uh, the amount of power that we got from accelerators in comparison to the amount of power that we got from CPUs, in green is constantly CPUs, and in the, different, the other different colors is from GPUs, over time since 2011, top 500 is a top 500 uh, uh, computers worldwide. It's, it's a list that has been updated twice, twice a year. And what we can see here is that as we move to 2022, more than half of the computing power worldwide that it sums up in the top 500 list comes from GPUs, meaning that we really need to figure out how to use this in order to get, to get computation for all of the uh, um, needs that I talked about before, all of the scientific computing and then climate and things like that, because the, the share of, of CPU power, although it's multi-core, is, is is uh, constantly decreasing in, 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 relative, uh, uh, in relative to, in relation to the to GPUs. Although uh, absolutely, is, uh, in, in absolute terms, it's, it's, uh, it's due increase. So let's take a look about uh, on one such computer. This is the Frontier supercomputer that uh, uh, goes online uh, a year ago, something like that. Uh, this is uh, this, the first sup, uh, one exascale supercomputer. Again, one exascale is 10 to the 18 flops per uh, uh, second. And what you can see here is that the new configuration has more GPUs on board than actually CPUs. Uh, uh, the next system that is going to be exascale is going to launch uh, uh, in this November. This is an Intel system. It's called Aurora, and it's been deployed in Argo National Laboratory in the US. So that system is going to be two exaflop, and it's going to rely much more on, on GPUs. So by that, we get this new paradigm of, in comparison to what we saw before, of CPUs, multi-core, attached to GPUs on a single machine. They're not actually sharing the memory. The, each of them have a distinct memory, but they do can talk, and each such compute node talks to other compute nodes. So that's how you, in a very schematic way, get performances today. This is in a uh, close-up of those of those uh, of those systems. Now, when we come to talk about how to actually utilize those those GPUs, we we know that we need to work in a high performance environment, meaning either we work with Python on TensorFlow or whatever, underneath there must be a high performance, a high performance uh, language. In this case, probably it's going to be uh, uh, C++. Uh, uh, in other cases, uh, you can find native Fortran codes. Um, and what we see is that we have different kind of APIs. Uh, some of them are hardware attached, some of them are vendor attached, uh, like SQL, OpenCL, uh, CUDA, OpenACC, and also OpenMP that came back from the times of, of multi-core. 
uh, to support the, uh, um, those GPU workloads. Now, why am I talking specifically in this talk? I mean, after this long introduction, why am I talking about OpenMP in this work? Why not talking about the rest of those APIs? Now, there is no problem with the rest of those APIs. Each of them have its own uh, uh, distinct features. Uh, OpenSC, no, but the rest do. SQL is, is, is vendor agnostic, but it's for C++, only for C++, and it's more like CUDA. CUDA is more, uh, obviously, it's harder attached. Um, sometimes we don't really get language incompatibility. We really want to talk about the ways to utilize this kind of hardware uh, immediately without to do um, code change. We know that massive code changes uh, for hardware is done, for a software is done usually with, with uh, OpenCL, NVIDIA, and so forth. But when we want to take a code that up to now worked on an environment of just multi-core and we want to move it to work with GPUs, not instead of those CPUs, but also with GPUs, we usually work with OpenMP. Why is that? Because OpenMP is playing on the entire, on the entire field. It can give us uh, this incremental fashion of, of, of uh, introducing parallelism. It can give us different types of parallelism. It's vendor agnostic, it's hardware agnostic, is, is, is language agnostic, agnostic at all. It uh, uh, have very good CPU GPU relations, and that's why I think that as, as an entry point, but also as an uh, experienced uh, 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 point, we surely need to talk about OpenMP when we want to move this kind of high performance code towards the future. If you want to get some kind of uh, uh, intuition to what I just said, uh, I participated in the ISC um, uh, conference. There were two conferences in supercomputing, like two major conferences. The SE and the ISC. ISC is the European one. SE is the American one. And I just participated in the in the um, in the ISC in, in in Germany. And there was a nice talk about how to make application ready for this frontier system, the one exascale system that I just saw, uh, that just presented. And you can see the top ten applications that run on this kind of uh, supercomputer. And it's mostly C, C++, Fortran, and OpenMP. So this is kind of kind of amazing. So we, we, we sums up when we really want to get this kind of performances in a hybrid system to using this kind of, of APIs. So now, after talking, I don't know how much time that was, uh, about uh, like 20 minutes about uh, the intro, let's talk a little bit about OpenMP and how to use it. In this way, in, in, this, in th those slides, I'm, I'm using slides by Tim Atson, he's a, a colleague. Uh, and uh, um, I think he done much much better work than than me in in explaining how to use OpenMP. So there are like several slides here uh, that that are uh, I'm, I'm using of of him. So let's talk about OpenMP at the basics. So what what OpenMP is actually what, what actually is OpenMP? So let's talk about that in several uh, layers. There is the end user layer, the application. Underneath, we can talk about directives, compilers, support, uh, environmental uh, variable things, things like that. Underneath that, we're talking about the actual runtime library. And underneath that, there is the actual hardware. So this is like the flow that I'm taking from the higher language, in this case, C++, moving all the way down to the symmetric uh, uh, CPUs. In this way, this is CPUs. And this is actually pretty simple to use OpenMP for CPUs. It's constantly talking about doing a fork and join. You uh, see, you, 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 you discover the parts of the code that could be parallelized well. You open, you fork threads per this kind of workload. It's usually in the common core of OpenMP, it's usually going to be uh, a work sharing for construct, uh, and and by ending that you return to your serial code and then back to another parallel code, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
So that's like OpenMP up to from uh, from 95 to 2005. This is like uh, uh, 10 years in which OpenMP constantly talked about this kind of of work. Just for uh, uh, if if anyone here don't familiar with with OpenMP, I will give like very very simple uh, uh, example to how it's been done, how it's been used uh, in the cases of uh, of. Um, uh, of, of using CPUs. So let's take the most simple example of, of computing pi. So that's been given by the integral of the function uh, on the left. This is the code, the serial code that represent that, uh, that computation. You can see that you have several uh, uh, variables. You uh, take the space, um, uh, divide it to several uh, sub-steps, and then you move on those steps and sums the um, the um, those um, uh, rectangles over there. And at the end, you compute your pi by taking uh, the step and 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 and, and uh, multiply it by the sum. It's really 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 simple. When we want to do this in uh, a parallel uh, uh, environment using OpenMP. This is the entire uh, 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 extra code that you need to, to attach. You need to say that, as, as OpenMP is constantly pragmas, so you say to the compiler, OK, compiler, see, this is going to be OMP parallel. This is going to be a parallel section. So all of that code is going to work in parallel. Then you, uh, in this case, you set a variable inside this parallel uh, um, uh, structured block. And you say this variable is going to be duplicated to um, the different threads that's going to go through this parallel section. And then over the for loop, which actually do the work, you say, I want to divide the iterations that you do, as I know that they are not really connected, besides the reduction to sum, as sum need to collect all of those data at the end. So you say, open MP4, take this for underneath and divided to the amount of threads that I have in the system. Let's say this is a system with 32 cores, so 32 workers, 32 uh, uh, threads in this case. And all that is going to be uh, uh, in parallel. And at the end, reduce all of those uh, sub sums to, the, uh, to one, one of those sums and give it back to me and compute the pi outside the parallel section. Very, very easy. Now, this is not. What I actually want to talk about, we want to talk about how to use uh, uh, GPUs and not to use uh, CPUs. So if we see what actually happened to OpenMP after um, 2005 in version 3, it started to support not the regular parallelism, but the irregular parallelism, meaning uh, the introduction of task. The introduction of task gave us the ability to do to take the uh, to to set a working environment of of in which threads are assigned to a task and task is a given uh, uh, it's a given as I want to say that a task is a given task but but a task is is a given work unit in which threads are are attached to it and not I'm not using the threads as it is but I'm attaching threads to a task and and by that I can um, synchronize those tasks very very uh, easily uh, in cases where the um, parallelism is not that simple as a parallel for. For example, I have a while and there is like some jumps there and I need to uh, connect all the dots. Now, those tasks allowed us to move for, uh, for, uh, further to version 4 and today's version 5, in which OpenMP added the host device uh, model, meaning a task that the 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 what the task is supposed to do is go outside of the CPU, fork another thread somewhere else's. Understand that although OpenMP is a shared memory environment, I'm gonna move outside of my my memory there, uh, here and go to another memory and work with another uh, uh, um, with another accelerator or some coprocessor or things like that, and maybe return back with the with the computation to the CPU. So that was the evolution of OpenMP 
up to the support for GPU. Now let's talk about how to actually do the support for GPUs. So you remember this slide, the change in this slide is going to this slide, meaning instead of thinking in terms of 2095 up to 2005 that the entire system is given by CPUs that are connected to some uh, shared address space, now we get those very complicated uh, nodes with, with non-uniform uh, uh, memory accesses, with attachment to, to GPUs and, and SIMD units and all of that heterogeneous computing uh, uh, thing. And the programming model goes like that. OpenMP think that there is a host. Host is where the uh, program starts. They could be attached several GPUs. We remember the, um, the slide before in which we described how a, a modern, modern compute node uh, uh, is assembled <coughs> with several CPUs, several sockets, and several GPUs. So by that, we see the similarity. And in each of those devices, uh, we have a distinct memory. So this is not shared memory anymore. It's shared across the shared memory to another memory, but not really shared. And, and, that's, the, and that's the programming model. When we want to do this kind of forking computation towards the, the GPU, we start with some initial thread on the uh, uh, host, and we move using, in this case, using the target pragma. See how easy is that? We just put this OpenMP target uh, pragma above where we want to move the computation from here to the GPU. And we do our thing on the GPU. At the end of this structured block, we go back to the CPU and do our work uh, from there on. Now, is that uh, that easy? It's, it's not, not seems to be uh, 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 possible, right? So now we will take examples and we show by different causes that I will add incrementally uh, what the problem with the given pragma and why I need to add some another feature to actually support the this uh, work fashion of CPUs and GPUs collaborating. So in this case, there is like this simple computation of of uh, uh, adding to um, uh, um, uh, adding to th those two arrays to to another array, and what what we get from uh, uh, putting this OpenMP target above the code is simply by just adding that I took A, I took B implicitly, and I moved those without doing anything. The, the system did that for me, moved those to the GPU. This computation, this uh, um, addition uh, over there, it's actually executed on the device. And at the end of the structured block, I get those uh, uh, variables back. So this is amazing, right? Doing like doing work with GPU with actually three, three, three words. Now, sometimes I would like to do this kind of work in an asynchronous way, or maybe synchronous, but in parallel to the work that I need to do in the CPU. So I have some kernel that I want to do, but I want to do different things with the CPU uh, at, at the same time. I don't want to actually wait to, down, to download this, to offload this memory to the GPU and do the computation and go back. So I can add the no wait clause it's added to this pragma from uh, the target pragma. And by that I saying do this kind of work fashion and, and do this asynchronously and maybe synchronously by saying task wait at the end. Wait for me until I will uh, 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 finish my work. So this is nice, but that's not going to work in cases where the arrays that I'm using are not really there. Uh, uh, but there, is, there are pointers to some other locations. So we talked about that, that the memory is, is, is uh, different. We have memory on the CPU and we have memory on the GPU. So when we actually malloc in, uh, malloc in an array, the data is not going to move there. What we're actually going to get in the, in the GPU is just a pointer to, to nowhere. So if we want to say, please copy this data to the GPU, I will simply add the map clause. And by mapping, it's as simple as that. Map, please map A to the GPU. And uh, uh, when you do so, I will have the ability to work with this data inside. When I'm finishing, I need to synchronize that backwards to, the, to this A. So 
right now we just saw how to mostly implicitly move move data to the GPU and doing that kind of computation on the, on the GPU, but this is not actually done in parallel on the GPU. We just move things and do a serial uh, uh, for on the GPU. So let's talk about how GPU is, is, uh, is given from the perspective of OpenMP. So from the, pers from the perspective of OpenMP, uh, we have those three elements. We have uh, the device. The device have those compute units inside the GPU, and each compute unit have its own processing element. So processing element is where the, the amount of processing element, in a way, uh, is, is setting how much the, the processing, processing elements uh, times the compute units times the amount of devices actually set the amount of parallelism that the, that the one system can give us. In this example, we can see that in all times uh, V100 or P100 GPUs, in the P100 we got uh, 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 56 compute units, multiple that by 64 uh, processing elements, you get immediately that you have 3,500 processing elements. Now, we just talked about CPUs that we have for a single socket, something like 32, 64. Now we are moving to 3,500. This is real. This is this is actually real hardware that can uh, work in parallel. In today's H100, you have 20,000 processing elements in a single, single uh, a piece of hardware. Uh, meaning that if we have, uh, let's let's imagine that we have a system with I don't know four of those, five of those. So we have 100,000 CPU-like parallelism. In, in, a, in a single system. This is amazing. So we need to actually understand how to exploit that. Given this model, now we, are, we, we see uh, with OpenMP, those in red, that this is pragmas in OpenMP, we see how we can move simply the uh, data from the CPU to the GPU. So target, we're already familiar with the target that moves the computation from the host to the device. Teams like teams in a soccer uh, uh, game. Um, it's the amount of threads that are usually not synchronized and are attached to some, to some device. The distribute, adding this distribute clause will take the amount of work and divide that to the teams. And the parallel for SIMD do the work inside uh, uh, a single compute node in parallel and also take in c into consideration that this is actually a single instruction multiple data work fashion. So those, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, uh, uh, five, five clauses and one, one pragma gives us the entire, um, the entire flow of the parallelism to the GPU. So it actually can be given in a single pragma not not uh, uh, not separately. So pragma omp teams distributed parallel for SIMD. I know it's pretty mouthful, but think that you just need to put that on top the uh, uh, um, structured block in which you have some force that do lots of computations, and it will take your data from the CPU to the GPU, distribute that to the different GPUs, and you will get your acceleration. How amazing is that? Um, I just talked about that. So how it's actually looking in the, in the perspective of the GPU, just in order to, for us to all uh, be on the same page. So we have the host thread. In the case that we do only target teams distribute, so target will move us to the GPU. Teams will give us the different teams to work with different GPUs, for example. And the distribute will take the workload and put that on the GPU. But on the GPU is not parallel yet. When I will add the parallel for SIMD, I will get this, this work in which I took the, uh, the workload, I divided that, I distributed that to the different GPUs. Then I'm taking for each, each team, I'm taking, I'm creating another threads that take advantage of the, uh, uh, of the processing elements and do this for SIMD. If we want to take, to see this, like, to be completely clear about how this is working, so see this pragma 
on top this kind of four from zero to 64. I don't know what there is in it, but whatever you choose. So we have 64 iterations to do. This is the workload. I'm dividing that by setting that the number of teams, I can control that, but even, I will, even, even, even if, if I will not write the num teams, num threads, and simd land, it will automatically do that for me. I do not need to do that, but I, it just for the demonstration to, to give you uh, the notion how it can be controlled. So I'm taking those 64 iterations. I'm dividing those to two, uh, uh, two uh, teams. Each team, in each team, I'm creating uh, a work sharing across four threads. And each thread do the work in a, uh, in a SIMD fashion, like adding uh, two, two vectors, I don't know. And that has been that uh, in a SIMD length, the length of the SIMD operation of two. So this is like very, very uh, a simple example. And you can instantly get how to work with that when you um, uh, go home after this, uh, this day. Now, that's how to do things uh, without thinking high performance, because thinking high performance is going immediately from the code to see what actually happened on the machine, right? Because many times you're going to see that the uh, profiling going to give you like bad results. You have uh, you have uh, things that are connected to Amdo's law that damage the damage the parallelism. You you want to check that. So very simply with Ansys today and Vitune. You can collect the, this data. The most important thing that we need to see here is uh, in those uh, rectangles uh, 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 in purple, green, and red. And what we see is the how much how much it cost me to move data from the host to the device. How much it cost me at the end to move the data from the device to the host. And per each kernel, it has the name of the function here. So how much it actually cost me to do this on the GPU? Now, I can give you a hint that in most of the time, the kernel itself is going to accelerate dramatically, but I'm going to still have this huge uh, uh, overhead of this memory uh, uh, um, uh, transitions. The memory transition cost me a lot, and I need to be very careful about doing this, because it's taking uh, 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 data, although it's like, uh, uh, high-speed uh, memory, but it's still taking data from the DRAM and move this to the uh, uh, HBM of the of the GPU, and that's very costly. So we need to think what we actually move in and what we actually get in back. So in the new versions we got of OpenMP, we got more control about how to do this um, uh, mapping of data and moving data more efficiently and give us more control about how doing that. So let's do like several iterations to understand how, how data moves here. So in this example, we are adding to the target uh, um, uh, pragma, we add in several clauses, the data map. I'm saying that in the structured block underneath this pragma, I want to map to the device the A and B um, arrays, but I don't really want them back. I don't need to, to add those back because I'm not using them back. I only need those to compute C. So C also, I don't want to send it to the device. I just want to get it back from the device. So I can control that. And between those two target uh, 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 sections, I can even do things on the host without touching those A, B, and C. So this is really, really good. It gives us a lot of control to do real things with, with OpenMP. Now, this is not enough because sometimes the things that we really want to do on the device, they do something on the, the, on the host. The things that we want to do on the host, sorry, not, not on the device, on the host. So you need to use the array that you just sent to the GPU. But I send a lot of things to the GPU. I don't want to return everything for that, that I, don't, I actually even don't want to return it. I only want to update the, the values of this array on the CPU, do my, do my things, and go back to the GPU and compute the rest of the, of the work. So I can use the target update. I can say, please just update the array, give me to do my things on the host, and then move 
move from there to the work to on the GPU. If I really want to be lazy, I can, and I do that a lot, uh, I add the uh, OpenP target enter data map and exit data map, meaning I'm just saying whatever I want without, regardless to the, to the, uh, uh, the existence of structured blocks and things like that, I just say where I want to get in, where I want to get out, and between there I can update whatever I want, but I'm not attached to any specific kernel or specific block that I'm using. In this example, I'm doing the enter data map after I initialize the array in completely different function, not even in the, in the main here, and I do the work after this init array, and at the end I'm getting out from the, from the GPU. This is actually working. If I want to do some dependencies, and that's almost the end, if I want to do dependencies and say, wait a minute, I just, I just uh, initialized this array in, in this uh, init array function, but I need to wait until I can actually use this to move this to the GPU, because if I will move this to the GPU without to be synchronized with this task, I can move garbage to the GPU, right? So I can add the depend, I will say, please depend until I will get this out in the other where you actually need the this array. I will say, wait a minute, I need this in and out. I need to wait to get it in, get it out. And and you can also constantly say, please wait until I will all the threads will reach the point. So this is like a perfect example of real usage with OpenMP to GPUs. This example is actually usage. This is actually how it's how it's done. There is a lot of extras. But that's for not the common cases. But in those simple instructions, you can actually work on GPU. And believe it or not, it can even be more easy. Now with OpenMP5, we are moving towards a more descriptive way. Instead of telling the, the GPU or the hardware how I want things done, I can say today to the machine, just I just want it to be done. And please do that for me. And for example, the loop construct that we got in OpenMP5 replaced almost all, all what you just, just saw. Instead of these distributed team things, knowing the hardware, whatever, OpenMP do all of that by, uh, uh, by itself. Uh, it looks on the hardware underneath. It do all the work for you. The problem with that, obviously, is when it's not working and you, just, you, you cannot just like add this OpenMP loop and say, do all that work for me in the GPU and synchronize everything for me. Uh, but it works. It actually works very nice uh, now in, in, in NVIDIA, but I believe that in the future in other, other hardware. Maybe, maybe one another amazing feature that I constantly talked in this, in this, um, in this lecture about this data movement, right? But maybe my code is not that dependent of data movement, and I am, I'm having much more like compute than data movement, or maybe I just don't want to handle this, this data movement. Can someone do that for me? So today I can write this requires pragma and say, please, please look on the entire code as a unified shared memory and do everything for me underneath, and it's actually working. The, the only problem with that is that when everything is unified, everything is costly. So you need to really take a look before you, you use that, because less control, less performances. So uh, that's like a statement in, in HPC. OK, uh, before we conclude, uh, in order to give you like the full experience of what we talked today, uh, I would like to move to a small demo of two state-of-the-art GPUs. In this case, this is the GPU Max of Intel. Uh, this is not an adver advertisement because it's like it's been sold now in, in, the, in the market. And the NVIDIA A100 GPUs. Those are relatively comparable. The, this is Intel Max 100-1000, which is the uh, lowest uh, ranked uh, GPU of Intel in, of new uh, Intel products, and it's really, uh, um, relatively comparable to A100. We can see the specs here. So pretty much the amount of the same amount of HBM, pretty much the same amount of compute cores. I will show you that uh, using the very common 
uh, uh, compiler suits, the, in this case, the ICPX and the NVC++. Uh, we will target those two GPUs. It's also in a system that have CPUs. And the only thing that we need to add to the compilation is adding the QOpenMP. In the case of Intel, QOpenMP, FOpenMP targets say that I'm working on a GPU. That's like the flags. If you want like specific thing from, a ver uh, from version 5, 5.1, 5.2, you add those flags too. Uh, in NVIDIA, it's much simpler, minus, minus O3, minus uh, MP GPU. I will show you that using this suitcase uh, uh, of solve, it gives us the ability to check everything about OpenMP for GPUs from the compilation to the actual, ex uh, to the actual uh, execution. That was done uh, by national laboratories in, in, uh, uh, in the US in order to show us that these features of OpenMP are actually working in order to be in constant control about how they work because everyone here knows that there is a lot of difference between things that have been said that are working and things that actually works in production. So uh, what, what I'm showing here, and that's the results that we also showed in the latest uh, ISC uh, in Germany, um, Intel and, and my research group, we showed that most of the features that I, I presented up to version five uh, do compile and run on those, do, on those two uh, state-of-the-art GPUs for C, C++, and Fortran. The lack in support is as we move towards uh, our version 5.1 and 5.2, but believe me, most of the things that we just saw and most of the work that you're probably gonna do, uh, it's already supported in the, in the compilers. So now, just to like, uh, 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 the cherry uh, uh, on top, we, we will uh, showcase uh, a real code, full code. Uh, in this case, it's a MATMUL, uh, uh, MATMUL example. I'm taking uh, 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 two matrices and I'm uh, uh, multiply those and, and sum the results. I also have that here in serial fashion and I can compare the results to see that uh, I get good results and it's also comparable uh, numerically wise. So let's see this video by my, uh, by my PhD student. I didn't do that myself. Uh, so that's how it works. So this is, in this case, we are targeting GPU max with OpenMP on the dev cloud of Intel. Uh, you have this, uh, let's see that resolution. Oh, okay, so resolution is okay. You can see here this example on the Intel page. You see all the programs that we talked about that are already supported in the compilers, the flags that you need to add to the compilation in order to make it work. Then we have the actual computation. This is the MATMUL here. So we want, as I said, to move that to, um, to the GPU and we will do so with, I'm not seeing it here. I will do so with uh, uh, connecting to the dev cloud. Uh, in the dev cloud, we already have this code. The matrices are pretty, pretty big, but not that big. Uh, and the compute goes to the GPU and do this open MP target teams distributed parallel four, moving A and B and moving C backwards. So that's actually how it's look. Uh, uh, so I'm showing you that what I sold you today is actually working. And uh, those are just uh, um, uh, prints to, to show us that we actually saw the device there, that I actually run that uh, on the device. And there is a serial calculation for validation, so I do the same thing on a serial uh, part of the, of the CPU, and I'm comparing those, those two to see that my results are valid. So I'm initiating here the uh, one API uh, framework, so I'm getting all the compilers and things that I need, great. Afterwards, I'm using ICPX. This is the latest version that I'm using, the 2023. It's very important to use the latest versions because there is constant updates to OpenMP in each, like it's in, in terms of month. I see here with the SQL minus uh, LS uh, uh, um, that the, the hardware is actually there. We're gonna see the act that the hardware is actually there from, the, from OpenMP uh, Verbosin also. I use those, um, I use those uh, flags uh, to compile. I also add 
um, uh, environment variable that will mandatorily uh, put this uh, uh, data on the GPU, so you can all be rest assured that it actually happened in the GPU. And then we run that, we see from the code that the name of the device is one, because we actually have just one GPU there. And it's passed, the, uh, the, the, the comparison was right, and it took us like less than a second. And this is kind of important because we constantly say that we need to see the profiling, right? So today's with Intel compilers and OpenMP, we can get the profiling from the compiler itself. Adding the OpenMP target plugin for profiling, and also we have that for debugging. We can set the amount of debugging that we actually want. We're going to get all of those uh, um, uh, profiling directly from the compiler. There is no need to use Vtune, so that's kind of, kind of neat. And uh, so we said that we want to have a profiling, we want to have this debugging, and we uh, run that. There is like many, many, many prints because this is the most verbosine version possible. But when now we can see this is the GPU max with the amount of EUs is 448. So you see there is a lot of parallelism in it. And, 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 and I can see the, um, uh, the cost of data allocation. Uh, device to host, host to device, uh, the compute time it took me, and by that I'm concluding uh, this video. And let's summarize our talk. We end, we reach the end of the of this talk. So what we what we talked about? I know that was a lot of a lot of information in these 60, 60 minutes, uh, but we started with why actually do things in parallel. What, wh why, why doing these, those things in parallel? We saw that things in parallel was during all times of computing. So do things in parallel is actually do computing. Uh, we, we showed the problems with the multi-core era and why we moved from there to the many-core era. We also showcased why many-core is not only AI, but is like everything that we have today in. In, in supercomputers, regular computers, and whatever. We showcased why we choose to talk about OpenMP because of the CPU-GPU relations and the incremental way to uh, add in parallelism in those code. We saw the tremendous uh, uh, importance of C, C++, and Fortran, and OpenMP to, to get us performance-wise to, uh, to those hardware and get the performances that we want. We learned about uh, how to actually target GPUs with uh, OpenMP, how to do this properly, how to, not, how to avoid pitfalls. And we also actually saw code that I believe that you can uh, recreate at home. And uh, by that, I would like to thank you, everybody, everybody that, to, to, that attended. Thank you. <laughs> Questions, if anyone have. Yes. What about the other end of the market? So can I today use OpenMP and have like single code base and get GPU acceleration on Windows, MacOS, iOS, Android? Like, is it already possible or are there any plans to implement this? The short answer is absolutely yes. Uh, OpenMP, uh, sorry, I will uh, repeat the question. The question is uh, actually how much, how OpenMP is actually uh, gonna uh, face us, not in supercomputers, but in actual common, common day uh, uh, hardware. So OpenMP can work on this Mac. It's actually working on this Mac and, and utilize the GPUs on this Mac very easily. It can work in any kind of environment, any kind of operating system. Uh, C, C++ and Fortran, even Python today, but up to 2.5, so without GPUs. Uh, it's called Numba uh, thing. Uh, and the main thing that I really want to say is that heterogeneous hardware is not only in supercomputing. Heterogeneous hardware is actually everywhere today. Any kind of compute node, high performance compute node that will get in the cloud, your, G your, your personal computer today, they all have like heterogeneous hardware. If you want to run even the simplest math model on your, on your desktop, so go ahead and add, add OpenMP, it will be much, much faster. 
Yes. If you want to write a new code for the NVIDIA GPUs, as an example, <coughs> is it better to write CUDA code or from the start, like C++ code regular and add OpenP to it? And regarding that question, what is the overhead that OpenMP adds to like CUDA code? So I will repeat the, the question. So we are talking about uh, the comparison between um, um, the, the API that has been attached to specific hardware, how much it, it better than using OpenMP that is more, more uh, um, independent of the, of the hardware. OpenMP is open standard, CUDA is hardware specific, and the differences in, in scaling, actually, of those, of those hardwares. So I can tell you that back like five, six, seven years ago, OpenMP was about 50% in performance than, than CUDA. Now, today, they are relatively the same. There is like a very nice chart that uh, showed, showcased that in all the benchmarks. Basically, almost all of them are the same. The only thing that is different is that CUDA will work better in case you do dense computations constantly. Meaning, if I really want to take my TensorFlow code and do that and work on GPUs, I will do that in CUDA or SQL. I will not do that with OpenMP. I will insert OpenMP in cases when I really need CPU-GPU relations. <laughs> if you don't want CPU-GPU relations, meaning work that you do on the CPU and on the GPU constantly, so you will probably not going to work with OpenMP, or you can work with OpenMP up to the point where it's uh, you don't get the where you don't get the performance that you need from there on. Meaning, you can add OpenMP incrementally to the code, so it's easy. But at some point, you cannot. That's because of AMDA law. You cannot add OpenMP to to code that you constantly want it to be parallel because it's incrementally per per segments. So you have more serial parts in this way than moving to SQL or CUDA. So, if, so to conclude, if you really want to have this like massive work TensorFlow thing, so do that with CUDA or SQL. But the rest of the, of the uh, work, and it's usually most of the work that uh, us as programmers we, we're going to do, is, is using OpenMP. I think that there was another another question, but we'll answer that afterwards. Thank you very much. <laughs>